Now we got a message on Facebook from Ian Clements, and he said, "I love that Chilean video. I reckon you guys can't read this story without laughing." So here we go again, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, this is an Australian bricklayer's accident report. So this bricklayer's um, accident report, which is apparently printed in newsletter for the Brickies Union after it come in, and if this is a true story, this bloke is 100 percent getting a Darwin Award. But it's amazing. So it reads, "Dear Sir." I am writing in response to your request for additional information in Block 3 of the accident report form. I put poor planning as the cause of my accident. You asked for a fuller explanation, <laughs> and so I trust the following details will be sufficient. I'm a bricklayer by trade. On the day of the accident, I was working alone on the roof of a new six-story building. When I completed my work, I found that I had some bricks left over, which, when weighed later were found to be slightly in excess of 250 kilos. Rather than carry the bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel using a pulley, <laughs> which was attached to the side of the building on the sixth floor. <laughs> Securing the rope at ground level, I went up to the roof, swung the barrel out, uh, and completely loaded it with bricks. Then I went down to the ground floor and untied the rope, <laughs> holding it tightly to ensure a slow descent of the bricks. You will note in Block 11 of the accident report form that I weighed 70 kilos. <laughs> Due to my surprise at being jerked off the ground so suddenly, I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded at a rapid rate of knots up the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel, which was now proceeding downwards at an equally impressive speed. This explained the fractured skull, minor abrasions, and the broken collarbone, as listed in Section 3 of the accident report form. Slowed only slightly, I continued my rapid <laughs> ascent, not stopping until the fingers of my right hand two were two knuckles deep into the pulley. <laughs> Fortunately, by this time, I'd regained some presence of mind and I was able to hold on tightly to the rope in spite of be beginning to experience pain because my knuckles were in the pulley. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground and the bottom of the barrel fell out... <laughs> Now devoid of the weight of bricks, the barrel weighed approximately 20 kg. I refer to you uh, to, again to my weight, 70 kg. As you can imagine, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building. <laughs> Six stories. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming up. <laughs> this accounts for the two fractured ankles, broken tooth and several lacerations of my, on my legs and lower body. Here my luck began to change slightly. The encounter with the barrel seemed to slow me enough to lessen my injuries when I fell into a pile of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, only three vertebrae were cracked. I am sorry to report, however, as I lay there on the pile of bricks in pain, unable to move, I again lost my composure and presence of mind and let go of the rock. <laughs> Uh, and lay there watching the empty barrel begin its journey back down towards me and then eventually on top of me. And this explains the two broken legs. I hope this, I hope this answers your inquiry. No idea. Oh, Sean's message through. He thinks um, he can add to that story. Oh, jeez. Uh, appreciate Here we go. that, mate. Uh, maybe just put a couple of days in between at the head. It's so already. I don't know why we always do this so early in the show. It just buggers me. Because I like watching you hurt. That's uh, why. <laughs> <laughs> Good mate. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this is from Paul Day all day. We had the standard six foot fence in the backyard, and a few months ago, I heard about burglaries increasing dramatically in my entire suburb. To make sure this never happened to me, I got an electric fence and ran a single wire along the top of the fence. I got the biggest cattle charger that the local farm supply place had. <laughs> it was made for 26 kilometres of fence. <laughs> I then used an eight foot long ground rod and drove it seven and a half feet into the ground. One day, I was mowing the backyard with my cheapo six horsepower mower. The hot wire is broken and laying out in the yard. I knew for a fact that I'd unplugged the charger, so I pushed the lawnmower around the wire, reached down to grab it to throw it out of the way. It seems as though I hadn't remembered to plug, unplug it after all. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> now I'm standing there. I've got the running lawnmower in my right hand and a 6.7 gigavolt fence wire in the other hand. <laughs> Keep in mind, the charger is about the size of a truck battery and has a picture of an upside down cow on fire on the cover. <laughs> 
time stood still. The first thing I notice is my balls trying to climb up the front side of my body. My ears curled downwards, and I could feel the lawnmower ignition firing in the back side of my brain. I was literally at one with the engine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Science says that you cannot crap, pee, and, <laughs> and ejaculate at the same time. But oh boy, oh boy, I beg to differ. <laughs> at this point, I'm about 30 minutes possibly two seconds, into holding on to the fence wire. My hand is wrapped around the wire, palm down, so I can't let it, let it go because my muscles are contracting around it. Oh my God. Covered in my own shit, piss, and with my balls on my chest, I think, so here I am, in the middle of January. It's about 30-odd degrees, 80% humidity, standing in my own backyard, begging for a lightning strike from the sky and God to kill me. I honestly don't know how I got loose from the wire. I woke up laying on the ground hours later. The lawnmower was beside me, out of petrol. It was later on that day that I... <laughs> it was later on in the day, and I was sunburnt also. <laughs> Upon waking up from my electronically induced sleep, I realised a few things. Three of my teeth seemed to have melted. <laughs> <laughs> Poo, pee and vomit when all mixed together Does not smell as bad as you might think My left eye will not open My right eye will not close The lawnmower runs like a demon now Seriously, I think our little session Cleared out some carbon fouling Or something is running better than you My balls are s still smaller than average Yet they are <laughs> My balls are smaller than average Yet they are almost a foot long each the good news is, is that if a burglar does try to come over the fence, I can clearly visualise what my security system will do to him. And that gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling all over, which also reminds me to triple check before I mow. <laughs> Wailing like a yeti with a large thorn stuck to his nutsack. <laughs> Going for a walk. Buckle in. <laughs> The year was 2013, and me and the wife were seasoned veterans of the Download Festival at Donington Park. But having reached my 40s at that time, I definitely was not up for camping with teenagers. So we had decided to diversify and go to a folk festival where we would camp. All weekend, the organisers had been banging on about some memorial bench to some chap who started the whole thing, and by the end of the weekend, we'd begun to feel part of the community. Fast forward a year, and we went back and went in style. I had purchased an eight-man tent for just me and my wife, along with furniture, a stove, and all sorts of camping gear. No tiny-ass tent for us this year. We got there early, got a spot for the tent, and set up for the duration. We were stoked. It was the day before any performances, and the organisers, along with a few of the musicians, had decided to get together at the site clubhouse where there was a bar and a small stage. To my delight, this one particular cider from the previous year was there, a day glow orange coloured concoction of perfection. The same cider that had helped me fall asleep standing upright in the middle of a watching a band. It should be noted that I was fully asleep yet still 100% standing. So I sank four or five really sharpish as the last drops of this highlighter pen orange sweet apple cider deliciousness slid down my wide open throat. The main organiser took the stage and had the conversation turn towards the memorial bench for the chat that we'd heard them bang on about the previous year. This took place during pint number six. At the end of pint number six, the lead organiser announced that anyone who wanted was free to join them as they made some sort of pilgrimage to the memorial bench for the departed chap. We were assured it was only a short walk and that no one was under any pressure to join in. So I thought to myself, I'll go for a walk then. What's the worst that could happen? Here we go. So off we went. It wasn't a long <laughs> walk, so I could see the location of the bench just a few hundred yards away. Along this curving wide track lined with hedges on one side and hills on the other, suddenly, like a SWAT team bursting through the doors of a house at the beginning of a raid, my body got my brain's attention and delivered its message. The message read, we need an effing cack. <laughs> Quickly followed by another message, which now read, now, nah, mother trucker. I panicked. <laughs> I looked around urgently, or as urgently as I could after six pints of that bastard. The clubhouse was too far, won't make it. No buildings to run into, lots of people. Open the hillside on the right, hedges on the left, hedges on the left, hedges on the left. My, bu <laughs> my, 
pickled brain made his decision and I spent 0.01 seconds assessing the best place for cover and my sound system had made its choice and using speeds faster than light, my brain had sent the message to my whole system to abandon the ship. <laughs> my turd was already halfway down the toboggan run <laughs> and I needed to reach the end before my poo did. The relief as I burst through that hedgerow was palpable, but rather short-lived, with trousers already at half mast and pants soon to be joining them, and the bobsled of boo coming around the dreaded ninth corner of the <laughs> Winter Olympic track. I realised I wasn't in a bush, <laughs> and I wasn't in any sort of cover. <laughs> I was on a small wooden jetty on the lake around which we all had pitched our tents. <laughs> Being a folk festival populated by hippies, there was a lot of family groups, like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and there and there were an uncomfortable amount of them sitting outside their tents, gazing across the lake with their families and the sudden commotion on the opposite shore on a small jetty where a large man had just appeared with his trousers around his knees, wailing like a yeti with a large <laughs> thorn stuck to his nutsack. <laughs> Unfortunately, for both me and these rather unlucky families, I was committed and there was nothing I could have done to stop the avalanche of wet orangey brown liquidy mess that exploded from my puckered kissy lips. <laughs> and the most unfortunate result of my hesitation was that I was only half crouching when it began to happen. And some of it missed the jetty, alongside landing in my clothes. As I realised what was happening, I hastily completed the cr the crouch and splattered the jetty good and strong. Unfortunately, the families were a party to these events as well. I didn't look at them, and once I rega regained some control over my body, I crawled slash scampered back through the hedge and ran, holding my shorts up as best I could until I found an abandoned, untravelled path <laughs> and stood right there was a portal. <laughs> The walk of shame through that campsite, trying to hide behind cars and other empty tents <laughs> with my shorts full of drying orange poo, avoiding those families who might recognise me was one of the worst few minutes of my life. So there I was, bagging up and discarding the clothes in what turned out to be a largely see-through tent in a family-friendly folk festival, trying to hide the fact that I was <laughs> the wailing shit beast of the jetty in the White Horse National Park. <laughs> when I got back to the clubhouse a full two hours after leaving to go on a walk, my wife asked me where I'd have been. And I just said, for another cider. <laughs> Other than that, sweet ass boys. Background to the story is, things I'll never do again. I had a pretty spicy meal the night before. My family and I were going to swim with the manatees in the Crystal River, Florida, in full wetsuits. It all started a party uh, of about 15 of us headed up the river on a specially adapted boat, which was very slow, so did not dis disturb the dozy leviathan. Soon enough, we were out of the boat and had a fantastic close-up encounter with the big fella. It was then that my stomach cramps started. As we got back on the boat, the pilot announced we were heading further up the river. The cramps were now multiplying, and I knew I was in trouble. I approached the pilot, whispered into his ears about the gurgling demon that I was holding in my stomach. He agreed to head back to the jetty, but said the rest of the party wouldn't be happy. I don't give a mother frickin' heck, I thought, as I began to sweat. As he opened her up to the full three knots it was capable of going, I was pacing up and down the craft and began spasming into a series of python-like silly walks. <laughs> After what seemed like an ice age, we got back to the jetty. I realised I couldn't run by now. <laughs> as by, I realised I couldn't run as by now my anus, cheeks and thighs were clamped tighter than an alligator's jaw around a local catfish. <laughs> as I limped, ran, stumbled my way up the jetty, heading to the toilet so I could see the other tourists looking bewildered at the strange guy hobbling past them. I made it to the toilet, bust through the door, slammed the door behind me and smashed the lock shut to take off my wetsuit. Only then did I remember that I'd asked my wife to zip me up as the cord on my zip was way too short for me to reach. <laughs> Outright so panic gripped me and the sweat was running like a river over my face. I began desperately trying to grasp the tiny cord on the zip by contorting my body into shapes that I'd never seen, <laughs> let alone managed to get into. And with, an, with another withering round of cramps and body shaking, I made one last effort. 
the nails of my right hand brushed the cord, and I somehow mustered the strength of a mighty tree-dwelling ape as I yanked on the diminutive cord it moved. I managed to get it far enough down to start wriggling out of this heinous rubber straight jacket. I got it down to my hips, and as I bent forward to release it further, then the agreement between my brain and my sphincter was no more. <laughs> Picture a hippo taking a ship with its little tail spinning around, <laughs> flicking feces everywhere. So close yet so far, I had to let go of. <laughs> I had let it go all over the cistern, toilet, and wall. Oh. There were mixed emotions at this point, as I'd never experienced such relief and disgust at what I'd just done. <laughs> It took me 40 minutes to clean up, and thankfully, the giant roll of toilet paper didn't let me down. I emerged into the sunlight just in time to see the boat was back at the dock and happened to catch my wife's disapproving eye. Her first words were, what is wrong with your ass?" I had little in the way of any explanation and could only say that we'd laugh about it one day, but that day is not today. And we have. Plus, we've shared this story with our friends and family for many years. I hope this brings a smile to you guys too. Cheers. Shitting Dave. <laughs> Shitting Dave. <laughs> Get on Guys, you, Dave. take it from me, don't shave your butt hairs. I was contemplating this problem when I had what seemed to be at the time a bright idea. Hey, this is my butt and my butt hair, right? So why don't I just eliminate all the hair so that when I'm crimping off a chimp's finger, it'll flow like beer from a keg, I thought to myself. <laughs> I performed the operation that night with a cheap disposable razor and a towel to sit on, starting from the bottom and shaving from the crack to the cheek. Finally, I wiped the razor one last time and surveyed my work. And my butt was as smooth as ivory. I smiled, satisfied, thinking my troubles were over. Whew, little did I know. Yes. I now have great respect for us here. Like anything in this world that God created, it has a mighty purpose in its existence. <laughs> It was only after I'd removed it that I started to learn how much I'd taken it for granted. <laughs> for one, it provides the glide that your butt cheeks need. After climbing two flights of stairs and starting to sweat, I started to notice something very unpleasant. As I made my way back to my dorm, it started to itch. God damn, did it itch. It felt like a swarm of ants had made its way up the crack of my backside. Fighting to keep from jamming my hand down there and scratching away, I rushed back into my room. Apparently, with no hair, the two pink twins can get vacuum sealed together. <laughs> and the result was as frustrating as a fart that had slid up and down between my cheeks like a lost gerbil, going nowhere. <laughs> as if that wasn't enough, I'm now uh, enduring further torture. As anybody who has ever shaved anything knows, when hair is first growing in, it comes in as stubble. Now imagine your ass having the texture of a Brillo pad. Well, that's what I'm dealing with now. It's a hellish torture, and there are many times when I just look out the window and contemplate, why, why, <laughs> why, why did I do it? Should I just jump and have it all be done with? There'd just be one fleshy splat instead of enduring this constant agony. Guys, do not shave your butt hair. <laughs> Oh. I was about 14 years old and was around at a mate's place here in England playing video games and just being genuinely lazy. And I hear his mum come in. So being polite, I stand up and say hi. Afterwards, my mate laughs. Oh, mate, your fly's down. My fly was l flying low on my jeans. And I was like, ah, oh, bugger. That's embarrassing. I hope that his mum hadn't copped the look at my teenage bell end. So whipped up my zip a bit quick and then I scream. I had managed to run the zip through the anteater so the zip was proper on there tight. As in the skin oh, the was the literally through the zip and stuck in the runner in the teeth. I bolted like a rat down a drain pipe and went home. Walked into the house and was shouting for my parents. My dad appears, uh, trying not to laugh. Uh, has a look. Tries to release my teenage beast from the teeth of doom, but absolutely to no avail. Oh. It's not going anywhere. So off to A&E we go. Oh. Approach the counter and I tell them that I need to see somebody as I've injured myself. Well, can I ask the nature of the injury there, young man? Well, I've hurt myself down there. Where? She says. Fine then. If we're talking in a loud voice... Well, I've caught the end of my dick and my zip, and it feels like it's been half eaten. Is that enough information for you? She just gives me a dirty look and tells me to wait. After some time, a nurse comes and gets me and takes me into a little room. With the end of my party balloon hanging out through my jeans, a male nurse comes in and says, Rightio, let's have a look at what you've done then. He has a look, and I can see the smile on his face. <laughs> wow. Let's see what we can do to get the little fella out of prison, shall we? <laughs> 
cheeky bugger. He tells me that after 10, I need to hold my breath and cough. And that's exactly what I did. And the bastard just tugged on it like he was pulling a ripcord on a parachute. I screamed at the top of my voice, mother hecker. And there it was, released, my now bleeding baggy foreskin in my hand like an oversourced bunning sausage. <laughs> He takes a look and says, no major damage. That'll heal up. Just keep it clean. Let's hope the swelling stays, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. And that, my friends, is my damaged Frank and Beans story.